So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a set of these rustic style benches. The other one is, is out of the camera view on the other side of my shop. Um, if you watch the channel, you might recognize this sort of style, which I call rustic. Um, I made a kitchen table for a customer, I want to say back in September, and she contacted me again because she wanted matching benches to go with the table. Um, I had some of the oak I had made the original table out of, but was able to supplement it with some more that my lumber guy still had in stock. So I was able to get a pretty good match of the table, which I was happy about. Which isn't always easy because if you buy, um, this is the top of this is red oak. If you go buy red oak from a different supplier or even red oak from the same supplier that's not cut and aged at the same time, it doesn't necessarily look, look similar, similar. So, um, like I said, this is going to be a pretty, pretty short one and only one part. Um, at this point in my woodworking career, making stuff like this is fairly straightforward and somewhat simple to do. So the bulk of this is going to be showing you how I cut the mortise and tenons to join the aprons to the legs, and then obviously making the top. Working with rust sawn lumber like this that you're not planning or, or doing a lot of jointing on is always somewhat difficult because you're working with un, uneven surfaces, but the end look I, I do really like. To start this build, I started working on the legs first. It can be kind of difficult to find thicker lumber, especially if you want to keep it looking rustic. So a couple years ago, a local um, crane operator, uh, the owner of a local crane operator, gave me these uh, big chunks of lumber that they use to stabilize the outriggers on their trucks. But when they get cracks in them, they they throw them out because they're they're nervous they're going to break in half. So this one is actually sweet gum, which I don't use a lot. In fact, this is the first time, the first time I used sweet gum was was with these these big chunks of lumber that they gave me, and I really like like working with sweet gum. It has a nice hue to it once it's finished. So I did some quick calculations and figured that I could cut this into a couple chunks and use it for the legs. There's two tables, so I needed eight legs and then I would have my lumber. Like I said, stuff this thick is, is harder to find, and if you do find it, it's going to be expensive. So I was happy to be able to use this chunk that I basically got for free. So after cutting off the tapered ends, I was able to slide this through the table saw. I forget exactly how wide these are. They're almost three inches wide, the pieces, because I did some calculations to make sure I could get four of them, which would render eight legs. Um, this piece has a one really flat edge, which is what I'm using against my fence, and it's not really cupped or twisted, so I felt pretty safe sending it through the table saw, but I have um, a ripping blade in there, so it was able to go through pretty quickly, and you can see I'm just going to cut this into, into those, those pieces. Flipping it over, because it's a little over four inches thick, so I couldn't cut it in one pass. So the nice thing about making rustic furniture is if there's burn marks or, or uh, pieces of chunks out of the legs, it actually matches the look. So I do enjoy working this way. It's a little less cleanup work to do. Once I had my four slats, I set up a stop on my crosscut sled and cut them into sections. The end benches are about 18 inches tall. I knew the top was going to be around an inch thick, so I cut these, I believe, to 17 inches. You could see, even though this is still pretty rough lumber, that just with cutting it on the table saw, they're, they're still pretty flat. So I've been making haunch tenons and haunch mortises for my pieces recently. It helps with twisting and bowing of the, the aprons over time. So in order to expedite this process, this time around I cut what is going to be the haunch with a dado stack, so I don't have to cut the whole thing on um, my mortising machine. Just because the mortising machine is, is great, but it's kind of a slow process, especially when you're cutting really deep mortises. So I went through and you could see I'm just uh, cheating this a little bit by cutting out the bulk of the material for the haunch with, with the dado stack. So this is a 3HN stack. You could see I can only cut four at a time and then I'll have to transfer those marks to the other side and change the sled and cut the other four to get those, those slots on the aprons. If you cut four identical, you won't have um, receiving ends to go to go with the table. So it's pretty simple. I cut the first four. I could transfer it and cut the other four, and those will be the first eight grooves 
needed for the legs because there's going to be a short apron between two legs and then a long apron between two others. So I'm do going through and cutting the short apron sides first. You can see this is pretty easy work. I just have a piece of tape there as a, a visual stop and then I can lift it up. So then those are all my pieces and then I'm coming in this edge. I'm marking them all with a pencil. I'll be coming in the other edge for the long aprons. And same process, it's on the other side, but I'm going to be able to cut four at one time, and then I'll have to adjust the fence and cut the other four. Going the same depth, this is about, I think I went three inches down, because my aprons are about three inch, going to be three inch oak. That was the only little chunk that came off with the piece. I was able to save it and glue it on during the glue up, but other than that, all this lumber stayed fairly true. So then those are the cuts, and you could see... I have four of them and then I have to make the other four. So once again, just adjusting the fence and cutting them as well. The other nice thing about benches are, and I don't intentionally make things unsymmetrical or unsquare, but working with um, rustic, working with lumber that's not jointed or planed can be a challenge. So if you're making a bench, square is, is you can it's not like a table where it really depends on it being square if these are a little off square it's not going to affect the piece and at the end of the day so i ended up my dado stack cut a little bit further down and once again because it's rustic and because i'm putting tenon pieces in there you don't even notice it in the finished piece but essentially i was going for three inches so now that front part of the piece is going to stay the haunch and then i'm just going to go further down with my um mortising bit so if it's a three inch tenon I have on that the first inch is going to stay the depth that it is which is one inch and then the two the, the other two thirds of this tenon are going to go down deeper I think I went down two and a half inches total so that's what I'm doing here the first the first go with the mortising machine is always the hardest because there's nowhere for the material to go but once you have that first mortise it, it cuts through the material really well and then I'm just going through and since I already have the marks for where I cut my dado, I don't have to mark any of these. I'm just going through and, and cutting out the rest of that material on the bottom half. Okay, clean it out with the screwdriver and then that's what that looks like. So to make the tops, like I said, this was the last piece of the oak I had from my lumber supplier, so I was able to cut the aprons, not the tops, I was able to cut the aprons out of these. Um, I have a jointing jig for my table saw, but the more I use it, the more um, it, it's not as true as it was originally, and I didn't feel like remaking it, so I just used a handheld planer to get the, this one edge straight enough using a long level. This actually worked really well. And then with one edge straight, I could then rip the other edge straight and then and then true up these boards. So then with that one side jointed, I could send these through. You could see these boards have a pretty severe cup on them, so I was extra careful sending them through. Um, twisted and cup boards, which is why building with rustic furnitures, building rustically is is extra difficult is just because you're sending boards that aren't flat through the table saw, and that's when a lot of accidents happen. Then I do, always do, I cut um, the tenons on my radial arm saw, it's the easiest way to do it. I just raise the blade and I do a test piece, which is what that was. When the test piece fits, I know I could cut the rest of them. This is a pretty long tenon, so it's a ton of curves, but it's really quick work doing it this way. So you can see I have a stop set up, so they're all going to be identical. I can cut all those curves, um, break them off with a chisel, and then and then clean them all up and get a nice flat, flat tenon. So then this is where the haunch is. Like I said, it was about an inch down and an inch in. So I'm cutting that material off. Once again, this is pretty quick work. And then that is what the finish uh, joint looks like with the haunch there. And then I just chamfer all the edges so, so it, it fits a little bit better. And like I said, that's what it looks like. And this was actually the first test test fit and it went in pretty well. There's always going to be a little bit of, of finagling to do with these, at least in my shop. Um, sometimes there's a lot of lumber still stuck at the bottom of the tenon. 
uh, the bottom of the mortise, especially when you're going that deep, it, this, the dust sometimes compacts at the bottom. So usually if I really thoroughly clean those out, it, I'll get a pretty good good fit. You could see the first four short sides I did, there's a little bit of a gap on some of them, but like I said, I cleaned out the mortises again and they all fit pretty nicely. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the long aprons. It's the exact same joint. These ones went um, not as deep, so the tenons weren't as big. And I could just slide and dry fit everything together. Then because there's such a severe cup in this, and I would have done this regardless, I'm going to be putting some dados in the edge and then some... Um, some runners underneath the table to not only attach the top but to pull those cupped boards together so i'm going to be using some some two by sixes i had laying around so i'm making this double wide you can see i have a three quarter inch groove and then i'm just going to be cutting another one um, i use a stop on my table saw and these are equal distance from the edge so i can make one cut flip it over and make the other and then when i go to put these together i'll know they're exactly um, aligned apart from each other because I cut them at the same time equidistance off the edge of the fence. These are the scrap 2x6s I'm now cutting down to size to fit in those dados. Now these I end up screwing into place because you'll see how much I have to pull that piece together. I actually had to use a, a clamp to pull the edges together so I decided to screw these into place and then I just filled the, the screw holes with an oak dowel. To kind of make it match a little bit better but over time i was nervous about just having glue in these because the cup's so severe at pulling apart so that's why i decided to sink some screws into them and this is all dry fit the only screws in this are the ones going into those those pine parts so for the top this is the new lumber that i got from from my buddy greg um, I repurposed a planer jig. I put a groove through the bottom to kind of true up these boards. Like I said, the jointing jig for the table saw doesn't work as well as it used to, and I didn't have time to remake it. So this for short boards works really well. Can clamp it in place and um, cut one edge clean. And then with one edge clean, I could flip them on the table saw and cut the other edge. This really only works with short boards with the jig I have, but for the benches, they were only, I think, 52 inches. So I cleaned those up nicely, and like I said, you could see I have one thick piece and one thin piece because these only had to be about 14 inches wide, and the original lumber I had was, was almost 12. And then I'm gluing these together at the exact same time. There's going to be undulations and bowing and cupping in these. That's just the nature of dried lumber. So um, it also helps with the rustic look because you'll see how I plane them down. I didn't use any calls on this, but you can see I put clamps on the edges just to try and get them as flat as possible. And then the next day I could come in, and these actually glued up really nicely. If you have too much of an undul undulation in the two surfaces, it, it won't work. They still have to glue up, glue up fairly flat. And then I could just trim them down to size because I, I made them oversized. So then I could glue up the, the piece at this point. The weather was a little bit warmer for a while, which so I was waiting for the glue up, and now it's it's absolutely freezing again until about Monday. So, but I was lucky I was able to get this glue up done earlier in the week. Adding glue to everything. You could see I'm I'm re-putting those screws in there, and you could see just how much it pulls that lumber because it was cupped that poorly. And then some pipe clamps on the end, and then this could set up. To attach the tabletops temporarily, I used some countersunk holes with some some um, oversized holes with some screws. I ended up getting figure eight for these. I won't show it in the video, but I like using those to attach things. And then these are just the little dowel pieces I use to fill in those parts. Once these are cut down and sanded, um, they look pretty good. Then to, to start working on the top, this is the bottom. So the bottom, I take off a, a little bit of material. I kind of test out how I want it to look because no one's gonna see it. So I'm using a power planer on a very low setting. So I'm only removing a little bit at a time. If you take too much away, this is gonna look like brand new oak lumber. And I'm just kind of gradually taking off the high spots. That's what I'm doing here. And the low spots will stay. And that's where you get that rustic look of the rough sawn lumber. So once I get, you could see the patchy look there, I take a, um, 
a belt sander and clean it up and then I'll send the customer a picture and they'll say usually I send it before it's totally fully done and they'll they'll say more or keep it the way it is and then the finish for this is going to be um, water locks and that is because that is the finish I use on the table so in order to get it to match the best especially over time because wood wood will will change color a little bit in your home especially if the sun ever hits it um, to, to stick with the same finish and those are the two benches